So hi everyone, we're here today um, with Peter Allison, director of Upper Valley Farm to School, Michelle Shepard from Reading Elementary, and Mark Gedman, who's the Farm to School coordinator there, um, Margie Bish, who's a paraeducator at the Hanover Street School in Lebanon, and myself, Caitlin Haskins, project associate with Upper Valley Farm to School. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Peter and tell us, he'll tell us a little bit more about the program um, and a bit of history um, into the mini grants. Hey everyone, um, I'm really excited about this webinar, the first webinar that Upper Valley Farm School Network has done. We really just want to provide an overview of the uh, Trek to Taste mini grants to give people a sense of how to apply what their purpose is, and then a couple examples from some of our rock star schools in Reading and Hanover, New Hampshire, who have participated in the event in, in the past, and they give you information about how to apply and get more information yourself. So this is going to be the sixth annual Trek to Taste, uh, which is a celebration of local food and local trails at the Marsh Billing Rockefeller National Historical Park in Woodstock, Vermont. And the event features uh, a celebration of local food all around the property on the trails in different locations, as well as a lot of activities in hiking events. I, I may be getting some echo there. Are you guys hearing that? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, not sure how to reduce that, but we'll see. Um, in essence, the, the mini grants are intended to help support projects conducted by schools to connect kids to their local food system, local farms and food and activities. And there's quite a bit of latitude in terms of the type of project that's done, uh, ranging from work with school gardens to farm visits to other types of activities that really bring kids in closer connection with the food uh, that sustains us and the food culture and history that abounds around the Upper Valley. The grants of $250 can be used for travel funds, project money, um, or to support the time of the coordinators. What we ask in return is that uh, for each of the projects that a team from the school comes and participates in the Trek to Taste, which this year will be on June 7th, the first Saturday in June, which is also National Trails Day, from uh, 10 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, and a little bit of setup time before that. And to come with um, an adult and a team of students, or two teams, it can be transitioned during the course of the day. And the event has really been a fabulous showcase for farm school events around the Upper Valley. The first year we had a half dozen or so, and it's expanded to 16 different schools who participated last year. This year we have funding uh, for up to 20 different projects by schools in the Upper Valley. The deadline is February 28th, coming up pretty soon. So we'll be looking for your application soon. And what we'd like to do now is turn it over to two of the teachers who've been involved in the Trek to Taste in the past, Michelle Shepard has been involved every single year since the inception, and Margie Bish, who uh, got involved for the first time last year, both of them had really great projects with their students. So let me actually just turn it over now to Michelle, who's going to tell you a little bit about some of her projects and what she's got in store for this year. Okay. Well, um, we, uh, I teach third and fourth grade, and we are part of our my teaching involves Vermont studies, Vermont history, learning about Vermont geography. Um, as third and fourth grade teachers know, it's a huge component of social studies um, learning. And so what I've tried to do is incorporate the um, local foods and farm to school theme into the project itself. Um, so it becomes more than just the local food, it becomes a whole learning experience for my students. Um, we've been able to weave science learning into our projects and um, there's a lot of collaboration that goes into it for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I think the first year we did 
we learned about dairy cows and, and the students visited a local farm where they learned about the life cycle of a cow and, and pretty much how to care for a cow and what it requires to get the milk that we drink. Um, then they, back at the school, they were able to learn about different products that we get from Vermont cows and um, work with some local milk to make some butter. Mm. And they put together uh, a tabletop display showing their learning. And um, part of their responsibility, and I kind of had this going from the very beginning, was that they are to stay with their project and show it off to the public at the trek, which is in itself a learning experience when you need to um, demonstrate something or explain how to make something. Um, you need to speak eloquently and, and clearly uh, about your learning. And so I feel like that experience was really valuable for my students. Um, so we've, we've tried to explore a variety of aspects of local foods and local farms. Um, we did, uh, one year we did green, we learned about greenhouses and how short the growing season is in Vermont. Um, so we, we explored a local greenhouse. We grew basil and the kids made um, basil crackers, which you can see in the picture there, I think. Yep, well, back of one or two, um, they, they use that same basil that they grew in the classroom in their little mini greenhouses to make those crackers. They, we visited a local greenhouse and saw how they were really grown and like mass produced. Um, then they were also able to make a, a dip from those. So you can't get much lo more local than that. So it was a lot of um, cooperative work. And um, so, like I said, every year we try to do something, uh, we try to have a different farm focus. Uh, this year we're looking at sheep and um, poss the possibility of how ver sheep have changed the Vermont landscape, which has been significant, both good and bad, historically. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at pro sheep products. What do we get from, from sheep? Um, this is what you're looking at is a maple pro project that we did last year. And um, my students visited a local um, Springbrook farm, actually and they par actually participated in tapping trees and gathering, they went back and gathered the sap and um, there was a lot of science learning involved in that project. Uh, so they had to actually take all of that information and bring it back to the classroom where they worked in small groups on a different aspect of maple sugaring to produce a display. One of the displays that you can, I think you can see in the slide there is tree identification so this particular group of stu students worked together to put together this piece of the tabletop. So they came up, this was their creation. Another group did tapping maple trees. And the, the um, historical connection there was comparing Native American times to modern sugaring. So there was that historical piece in that project as well. Great, thank you so, so much, think, Michelle. Yes. It's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty busy time, but we really appreciate the opportunity to be able to do this um, project as like, sort of a culminating mm -hmm. experience for, for third and fourth graders here in Reading. Wonderful, thanks so much. Um, Margie, your turn. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about what you've done in the past. Sure, um, I uh, am a first grade paraprofessional at Hanover Street School in Lebanon. And last year, um, you know, we, we still at this point in time don't have any garden, outdoor gardens at our school, but I was interested in trying to start something at our school, getting our um, school up and running in some way, shape, or form with um, this farm to school project. And I stumbled across this grant and came up, with, I think, with some folks at the Upper Valley Farm to School. My objective, objective was, well, how do you grow anything at your school when you don't even have a garden to grow anything in? How can you start a program where there is absolutely nothing, which is what we had <laughs> at the time? Um, so I decided to start a small after-school program and uh, have third and fourth graders come. And we were able, with the monies from the Upper Valley Farm to School, network to purchase two indoor grow lights um, with the, the idea that even at some point in time when we 
were to get an outdoor garden, it would allow us to do some indoor gardening in the winter, which is um, a pretty pretty nice thing to be able to do in December, January, and February in New England. Yeah. So um, I thought it could be a nice um, merger between the two, and it actually turned out to be a fabulous. It was actually uh, a lot more fun than I could ever have imagined. Um, we had probably three or four students in the group that had never even tried lettuce and that's what we grew. We grew lettuce, uh, the experiment was to grow lettuce in three different, under three different light sources, one being the the grow lights and the other two sources, one being in the on the windowsill, in a south facing windowsill in our school um, and the other one was just under the hall fluorescent lights. And so each week we would gather and uh, measure and see how the lettuce was doing and it was an absolute treat and at the end we ended up having this um, wonderful uh, celebration where where we had were able to go to this trek to taste which neither the parents nor I or the kids had any idea what to expect when we went to trek to taste and it blew us all away what was going on in other schools all over the upper valley and we had no idea and uh, the kids were energized by it. They were so excited to be able to share what they had learned. It was it was um, definitely the highlight of the whole process for us. So it was great the whole the whole time. Um, so I already I know that the same kids that were that were doing it last year are already like when do we get to go back to do trek to taste? So it was absolutely oh, wonderful. Um, so it's been a very positive experience. Um, it was it was a small project um, and that was fine. Um, in keeping it small um, and having that seed money we've um, won over the hearts of lots of people at our school so much so that our principal gave us permission, gave me permission to write a grant to the Wellborn Ecology uh, Fund uh, and we were awarded grant monies and we're actually in the process of getting our beds uh, built indoors right now for a spring installation and so we'll have I think 240 square feet of raised beds going in in April and so that little bit of seed money last year has allowed us to grow our program significantly and so we're very grateful so if you haven't done it you definitely should do it <laughs> I'll second that <laughs> wonderful Thanks, Caitlin Caitlin, before you uh, wrap it up, I just wanted to mention two other things. One of which is that um, one of the things that was most exciting and heartwarming about the project for me was the students in these two programs and other programs in their enthusiasm as presenters and educators to close to 800 adults and families who came by explaining the ins and outs of the experiment they conducted or the uh, ins and outs of the science now and historically about maple sugaring or the other events that featured bread making and cheese making and um, raising chickens and all sorts of different types of projects. The kids were just uh, completely excited and informed and really engaged with all the people who participated. The other thing I just wanted to mention, which I forgot to mention at the outset, is that the funding for the mini grants, the $250 mini grants, comes from very generous support from the Adequacy Health Foundation, the Wellborn Ecology Fund, and the Byrne Foundation. And their support has enabled us to increase the number of grants we're able to give this year to up to 20 uh, different projects from schools in the Upper Valley. So, Caitlin, let me turn it back over to you and just to give folks a sense of next steps and how to how to get involved. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. So you can find the application on our website. It's uvfts.org. Um, from the home page, you want to go to events, uh, scroll down to annual events, check to taste, and then way off to the right, you'll find mini grants. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. Um, there's some basic information which you can also find in the, the Word doc application, which you can download by clicking either at the link at the top, click here to download the application, or if you scroll down, you'll see a big link that's hard to miss. It says download the mini grant application. 
depending on your browser, it may open in a separate tab or window, or it might download um, right to your desktop or wherever you've selected. So we'll go ahead and look at the application briefly. Um, there's some information about eligibility, the application process overview, um, use of grant funds, and some specifics about what you can use the, the grant for. Um, just go ahead and fill out the application or send the information to me in an email. Um, and sign and date the bottom. You can go ahead and, and print this off, uh, fill in the information, scan it, and email it back to me if you wish, or you can mail it directly to us. Um, you can find the mailing address on our website or in our newsletter footer. Um, applications are due February 28th. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know or contact Peter directly. Um, and I think that'll do it. Anyone else want to chime in before we wrap up? No, I just I just wanted to say that I would really encourage people to or student, people teachers to give this a try. It's really um, such a worthwhile um, project for your students. And also, you know, the really the goal here is to get kids to be to eat healthy and to maybe be a future farmer someday. So mm -hmm. we want to preserve our Vermont landscape and teach kids to eat well. And, and I would like to encourage uh, the folks in New Hampshire. I think Hanover Street School last year, I was told, was the very first school ever from New Hampshire to apply for the Upper Valley Farm to School Mini Grant. And, um, and we'd like to see some more New Hampshire faces at the back. It would be great Absolutely. to see you. Yeah, we'd like to echo that. Good point, Margie. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you all so much. Um, we'll be posting this online probably via YouTube, um, and we'll send out the link. So stay tuned. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. See you soon.